Now on 13 on your side, we're honoring and remembering the legacy of a local Yuma law enforcement agent after the news of his passing. Plus, a wanted man hiding from police officers in a residential storage shed appears in court for the second time. We have the latest details from inside the courtroom. Veterans are trying to start and grow their own business. I'm Wiley Jahari here at Calexico with how the San Diego State University and the Small Business Administration are helping veterans accomplish their dreams. 13 on your side starts now. Good evening and thank you so much for choosing to be with us tonight on 13 on your side. I'm Scott Gross. A pillar in the community sadly died over the weekend. 13 on your side's Arlette Youssef has more on this major loss. Special Operations Supervisor Vincent Dulesky of the Yuma Sector Border Patrol died Friday evening. His dedication to the residents of Yuma and the entire country is unmeasurable. He joined Border Patrol in August 2007 after serving in the United States Marine Corps, making lifelong friends along the way. His Border Patrol career has allowed him to train and lead numerous agents throughout the years. His countless hours of contribution to the Yuma sector and border security have been recognized by local community members, state officials, and our federal leaders. In addition to his undeniable service, he was a father of four, a husband, a brother in arms, and a confidant to many. Those who knew him called him Vinny, always smiling and always willing to lend a helping hand. Vinny was truly concerned about others. The Dulesky family is planning a celebration of life in mid-April to honor his legacy. Dulesky was 47 years old. I'm Arlette Yusuf reporting. Can't find the word. <laughs> <laughs> He was always a fixture here on 13 on your side. He will be missed. Our thoughts and prayers out for the family as well. A Yuma man accused of shooting and killing someone at a bar will have his trial date moved due to a scheduling conflict. Jerome Hall was charged with first degree murder and aggravated assault over a year ago. His trial was set for this July, but there is another trial happening at the same time. Judge Brandon Kinsey says the other trial takes priority because it is a 13-year-old case and involves victims. Now, Hall's trial will begin in November. More news from court. A mental evaluation has deemed a San Luis man competent to stand trial. Marcos Rubio Diaz was allegedly caught stabbing a woman with a large kitchen knife. She miraculously survived. He is being charged with attempted first degree murder and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The state is also working on a possible plea agreement, but they will need more time to draft it up. Another man could also be offered a plea as the state works to gather the details and confirm with victims Adolfo Horos Kempton, who allegedly put his own brother in a chokehold and killed him, remains in custody. There is no set trial date, but the state hopes they can come to an agreement before it gets to that point. And just last week, there was a lot of police activity on La Mesa Street in Yuma as officers attempted to take a wanted man into custody. Today, in court, though, we learned he will not currently face charges for the incident. According to the Arizona Department of Public Safety, Joshua Dugan was spotted by an officer and recognized for an outstanding warrant last Thursday. When the officer attempted to arrest Dugan, they say he fled and hopped over a wall, then hid in a shed. Officers arrested him 45 minutes later with the assistance of YPD. Prosecutors, however, have not received the police report yet, therefore cannot charge Dugan. The opportunity to review a prosecutor cannot make a determination as to whether or not they're going to charge because no complaints been filed in each of these cases. I will, I'm required to order the removal of all conditions of release. Dugan was informed he could be held in custody due to a previous probation order and that if he was released, he could expect a court summons in the very near future. Across the border now, where another woman was murdered and as a crime is on the rise, the U.S. Embassy has an advisory in place suggesting American citizens do not travel to Mexicali. So far this year, there have been 74 murders. The chief of police in Mexicali said that crimes between cartels in the valley fell by 50%, but murders in the city increased. 
He said that the crimes committed in the city are mostly related to social problems, such as domestic violence or drug use. We continue to reinforce security in the Mexicali Valley. The percentage of deaths has been decreasing. In January, we had 34 murders. In February, we had 21. And in March, 17 murders in the valley. As a result of the coordination between the police agencies and supported by the Mexican army. But we also need to do preventive work in the most conflicted communities where domestic crimes occur. The U.S. Embassy has issued three safety alerts this year for tourists considering a visit across the border. With how busy it's been at the border, the Calexico Fire Department is responding to an excessive amount of calls at the port of entry. Vanessa Gangora had a chance to be there for a life-saving call. I rode along with the Calexico Fire Department ambulance on Monday night and got to experience firsthand how the crew responds to medical emergencies at the port of entry along the U.S. and Mexico border. The first call of the night was a woman appearing to have a seizure. Firefighters were on scene in less than five minutes. The patient was shaking, unable to speak and feeling numbness throughout her body. Calexico paramedics transported her to El Central Regional Medical Center. The Calexico Fire Department says people often cross the border for better treatment in the U.S. The port of entry in uh, 2021 we ran approximately 40 percent of calls out of uh, 5,000 plus calls. Another firefighter added the taxpayers of Calexico are funding the medical services provided to the port of entry calls. That's because the majority of the one million people who cross the border every year do not live in Calexico, but are still receiving treatment here. One paramedic said U.S. citizens or not, they will not deny service to anyone. Even if you're not a U.S. citizen, we have all the border jumpers as well that jump the border. We are there to serve them, the people. The department and city are looking into federal funding through various grants to ease the financial impact the border traffic brings. Reporting in Calexico, I'm Vanessa Gangora. And the Calexico Fire Department stayed busy today. They had multiple calls at the same time and one was saving a home that caught fire. Only one engine was available to attend the fire immediately. Once the other three units finished their work, they showed up. They assisted putting out this fire. The fire started in the attic, but it's still under investigation as to how it started. IID came on the scene to turn off all utilities. The residents of the home were not injured. Everybody's okay. Everybody was able to get out. The fire took about 10 minutes to put out. The department contacted the Red Cross to help the people of the home. Let's take a look outside on the RV World of Yuma Skycam. A very warm evening right now. The moon is at about 20%. We're waiting for our next full moon on the 16th. But we have clear skies as well. You can see all the stars out there, any constellation you like. And the winds are still light, but changes, they are coming. Yeah, we're going to be in the mid to upper 90s. Coming up in your first alert forecast, we're thinking about triple digits. Yeah, not thinking. We're expecting to see them sooner rather than later. Those gusty winds will also return. And bird is the word. Yeah, that is the title of our viewer weather photo. You have to stick around to see what it is. All of this coming up in just a little bit. The U.S. Small Business Administration at San Diego State University in Calexico is helping veterans start or grow their own business. Our reporter Wiley Jahari has the details. Several veterans, even one on active duty, attended this event here in Calexico. Now the purpose here is to help veterans achieve their dreams of starting or growing their own business. According to the 2020 annual business survey, approximately 18% of U.S. businesses are minority owned and veteran owned businesses made up about 5% of all businesses. The Boots to Business event at SDSU hopes to increase that percentage. Actually getting to meet um, business advisors and and even the, today, the director of the Veterans Business Outreach Center. Some veterans fall into depression after duty, especially those who aren't aware of the help that's available. There's a lot of resources that our veterans have. One of them is the VA loan, business loan. And one Marine who's still on active duty is hoping to grab every bit of knowledge from this event when it comes time to transition back to civilian life. It's really exciting to talk about 
what it is that I want to do and then being around like-minded people that also can provide me um, like information as far as resources um, kind of guidance be mentors I'm here to kind of under, better understand how to create a business plan so I can develop business credit. Big dreams for Elizabeth, who is currently still serving our country. Of course, we thank her for her service. Meanwhile, the SBA and SDSU say they will continue to empower veterans like Elizabeth to reach for the stars. Reporting at Calexico, I'm Wiley Jahari. Here in Yuma, Mayor Doug Nichols is officially running for re-election. And tonight shares why he wants to continue representing the city and its people. Some of Nichols' top priorities for his new campaign are job creation, public safety, low taxation, and civic pride. Nichols has been Yuma's mayor for the past eight years and says he would like to continue representing his community and improving it any way he can, saying it's been an honor to represent the great and amazing people of the city of Yuma on local and international issues and he believes that we have seen great growth and change during his term. However, there's still more to do. I've taken on very tough situations, um, have tried to be very practical, common sense about them, uh, and represent without being uh, maybe extreme. And that's a proven record. You can see that over the last eight plus years. You can see what, is, what I've done and what my style is and how I represent the 100,000 people of Yuma. Nichols is running against one other candidate, Karen Watts, a current member of the city council. The Arizona primary election is on August 2nd and the general election is on November 8th. Student loan payments may be getting a reprieve. I'm Michael George with a potential impact on 36 million Americans. Plus, millions of Americans are in the path of a dangerous storm system with more than two dozen tornadoes expected to hit land tonight. The very latest, straight ahead. This is a Tempur-Pedic mattress, and it's designed to help make aches and pains a thing of the past. Because only Tempur-Pedic uses our one-of-a-kind, incredibly adaptive temper material to relieve pressure points and support your body in a way no other mattress can. Molecule by molecule and millimeter by millimeter, all night, every night. And right now, get a free $300 gift when you purchase any Tempur-Pedic. Denver Mattress, the easiest way to get the right Tempur-Pedic. Brighten up April with Paradise Casino's $45,000 Spring Fever Cash and Rewards Play Giveaway. Spring into winning and earn entries by playing all month long. Don't miss the hourly drawings on April 2nd, 16th, and 30th from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. You could win up to $5,000 with Paradise Casino's $45,000 Spring Fever Cash and Rewards Play Giveaway. So much, so close. Paradise Casino. Julie was always a, a voracious reader. She'd carry two novels on an airplane because she'd read one on a three, four hour ride. And at some point, I began to notice that she would read a page and couldn't remember what she had just read and she'd have to go back and read it again. I don't remember much these days after I read, but less does for me and I love it. If they feel like we're not covering something, we work for them, we work for the public, we work for you know, our community here. And so if, if they feel like we're not covering something or we're not following up on something, they're more than welcome to reach out to us and let us know and, and keep us informed and let us know what we're not seeing or you know, we can't be everywhere. So sometimes those viewer comments are important for us to know what it is that you know we might be missing. I, mean, I take the viewer's trust very seriously and making sure that I'm doing the best job I can to keep people informed. If you're buzzed and doing this, to make yourself feel okay to drive, ZWX. You're not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, regular you. Thirteen on your side starts now. 
Welcome back. I'm Scott Gross. The White House is getting ready to extend a pandemic era freeze on federal student loan payments set to expire on May 1st. Now, when the moratorium ends, millions of people will add another bill to the monthly pile. CBS's Michael George has some tips on what borrowers, borrowers can do. 22-year-old Brendan Rooks recently started his career in public service with his student debt waiting in the wings. I currently have just over $10,000 of student debt. A pandemic-era pause on federal loan payments had been set to expire on May 1st, though the White House is planning to extend the freeze through August. More than 36 million people have not had to pay their loans since March 2020 totaling about $195 billion so far. The Student Debt Crisis Center and Savvy surveyed more than 23,000 borrowers and found 92% of those now fully employed are concerned about making their loan payments. One third of those borrowers told us that in preparation of payments resuming in May, they are skimping out on basic needs like food, rent, and health care. Advocates have been pushing for an extension, and many are calling for loan forgiveness. I think we can all agree, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, that the student loan system is broken. Experts say borrowers should use this time to plan ahead and have a strategy when the bills start coming. Update your contact information, sign up for auto pay, research repayment plans, and consider income-driven repayment. While it's this very strong labor market, some people maybe are not making as much money. Maybe there's an income-driven repayment plan that's in your future. Rooks is planning to attend graduate school in the fall, where he already knows he'll incur more debt. Michael George, CBS News, Long Island City, New York. That leads us to our question of the day. Should the Biden administration cancel student loan debt? Again, the, there it is. 39% of you said yes. 61% of you said no. Thank you to everyone who participated. Now to some breaking news uh, out of Illinois. Uh, millions of Americans are, and make that to Georgia, millions of Americans are in the path of a dangerous storm system. Tonight there are reports of more than two dozen tornadoes and the threat continues into the night. CBS's Mark Strassman is in hard hit Decatur, Georgia. Yo, what you're seeing is a tornado, Allendale, South Carolina. The skies lit up with uh, tornadoes we, tearing we across the south. This giant twister was seen outside of Allendale, South Carolina. The town of about 3,000 people is believed to have taken a direct hit. The storm system spawned at least 25 tornadoes across the south. It moved through several states, including Louisiana, Alabama, and Mississippi. In Texas, at least four people had to be rescued from flash flooding. Through South Carolina and Georgia, the storm downed trees and power lines and left a trail of damage. One woman was home here when the storm hit. She's fine. Her neighbor's house was also hit. They told us in that moment, it sounded like a bomb went off. Mark Strassman, CBS News, Decatur, Georgia. Coming up in your first alert forecast, we'll take a look at our satellite and radar of the storm's current path. We also have changes coming our way for the desert southwest, and they're going to be a little uncomfortable. I'll explain straight ahead next. Imagine a knife taking this much abuse and didn't need sharpening. Introducing the incredible NutriBlade knives. They're coated with granite stone nonstick and made of stainless steel. One of the hardest substances on earth. Now everyone can chop, slice, and dice just like a pro. The Easy Grip rubberized handles deliver incredible control and accuracy to chop salads in seconds and cut frozen solid meat with ease and get razor thin slices every time. The nonstick surface means food slides right off and they're dishwasher safe. Plus, they'll stay razor sharp guaranteed. A complete set of chef knives can cost you hundreds, but today you can get this professional six piece set of NutriBlades for just $29.95. Order right now and we'll even ship them to you free. Now get your own NutriBlade knives from Granite Stone, the last knives you'll ever buy. Call 1 800 523 8431 or go to buynutriblade.com. Everybody has a flashlight, but can your flashlight do this? 
The Bell & Howell Tactical Flashlight can. The Bell & Howell Tac Light can do things no ordinary flashlight can do. Look, this civilian flashlight puts out pathetic light. But our military-grade Tac Light, that's 22 times as bright. It's so bright, it can be seen up to two nautical miles away. Only a Tac Light has a super bright strobe that can stun and disorient would-be attackers. A car battery will stop working in sub-zero temperatures, but even getting frozen in a block of ice couldn't make our TAC light stop working. It's tough enough to survive getting run over by a Humvee. Try that with a regular flashlight. You can get a Bell & Howell TAC light complete with a lifetime guarantee for just $19.99 plus free shipping. And while supplies last, you can even get a second one. Just pay a separate fee. To order call 1-800-369-0338. That's 1-800-369-0338 or go to TryTacLight.com. The only person you can count on is yourself. You don't got no teammates in here uh, in the ring with you that's going to help you fight this fight. It's just you. And I had one kid that he just was real quiet. He would actually stutter like he was really shy. He's changed so much in the last year. So it's, it's more than boxing. We put everything back into this gym. In the community's corner, April 13th at 10 p.m., only on 13 on your side. A very good Tuesday evening to all of you across the desert southwest. Still quite warm out there. We're at 77 degrees under mostly clear skies. The sun will rise tomorrow morning, 622 for those of you in Arizona, 626 for those of you in California. Again, a look outside on our RV World of Yuma Skycam. Nice and clear out there. Moon's at 20%. We're expecting our next full moon on the 16th. Winds are currently light. That will change, and our temperatures are going to drastically change as well. Let's take a look at our satellite and radar. I'll show you what we have coming up throughout the area. Again, clear, as I mentioned, that will continue into tonight, into tomorrow morning. Jumping ahead and taking a look at our future cast, these are the areas that will see snow or precipitation, at least expected today, this Tuesday. And a wider view of our satellite and radar shows that to be the case. The Midwest, Minnesota getting some snow, also to the south in Iowa, Illinois, and Wisconsin seeing some rain. And those big storms that we heard about near Decatur, Georgia, have cleared off into the ocean on that uh, east coast. So not, uh, not as... Uh, threatening as it was earlier today into the night. And again, uh, Eastern time, they were buckling down. Back down here in the desert southwest, current wind speed, we're at 6 miles per hour in Yuma, 10 YPG, 7 in El Centro, and 8 in Imperial. And a look at our future wind scale shows. Winds will be light into tomorrow morning. Look at that band, though. Gusty winds, that green's going to be anywhere between 20 and 30 miles per hour. That will come through tomorrow morning, then leave, then come back again tomorrow night. A look at our air quality index brought to us by the Imperial County Air Pollution Control District. A few more changes. Some of these have just changed. Uh, Brawley is now moderate along with El Centro. Uh, Nyland and Westmoreland still good. Again, those just changed moments ago. A look at our temperatures. We'll stay in Imperial County, California at 75 in Imperial, 75 Holtville, 72 currently in El Centro, 81 in Ocotillo and across the county and state line into Yuma County, Arizona, also known as the Gila Valley. We're at 73 in Yuma, 76 in YPG, 77 in the foothills. Wider view of our temperatures. Here's where we stand in the west. We're at 62 in San Diego, 81 Palm Springs, as I mentioned, 73 in Yuma, 83 in Phoenix, 74 in Tucson. Our viewer photo of the day comes in from Banuk Radarte. Yeah, this is a bird's eye view of a Yuma sunset. He sent in last week. You can see the bird in the front. I believe that's a crane. You're also seeing a duck out there swimming in the pond. And what a great reflection of the purples, the pinks, the blues. Banuk, thank you so much for capturing all of that. If you've got a photo that you're excited about and you want to share, a couple of ways you can do that. One is to scan that QR code. It'll take you right to the weather photo gallery. From there, upload your photo, include your name, a couple descriptions as well, or find me on social media or drop it off on our homepage, kyma.com slash share. Yeah, we're going to get a lot warmer. How warmer? Take a look. Here's your seven-day forecast. 97 tomorrow. 97 
on Thursday. Again, those gusty winds, 20 to 25 miles per hour, will remain with us as we get into the weekend. 100 on Friday, back to normal on Monday, 83. That's about our average for this time of year. Also, the Imperial Valley, much of the same. Very hot starting tomorrow, 97, 100 on Friday, 101 on Saturday. 93 on Sunday, still going to be very, very hot, and then back down to normal on Monday and Tuesday. Next on 13 on your side, a busy day and night in prep sports across the year, including a crosstown baseball showdown in Yuma. Sports is straight ahead. <laughs> <laughs> good info is a good thing. The Broadway Curve Project is in the works. Prepare for lane closures and detours. Stay ahead of the curve at I-10BroadwayCurve.com. Don't get stuck with internet and TV that costs more and does less. Set yourself free with Spectrum and get it all from one provider. Get Spectrum Internet with enough speed for all your devices all at once with speeds of 200 megabits. Whoa. That's fast. Plus, get a free modem and free desktop security to keep you safe online. Get Spectrum Internet for $49.99 a month. Call 833-605-4999. And don't get stuck with the same old TV. Multiply your screens. Spectrum TV with a free Spectrum TV app lets you watch here, there, and everywhere. Stream live TV, sports, news, and more on any device. Plus, access up to 85,000 on-demand titles. Get Spectrum TV from $49.99 a month. Call 833-605-4999. Don't get stuck paying more for less. Pick and choose the services you need. Spectrum Internet or TV, or get them both for $49.99 a month each, all with no contracts. Call 833-605-4999. Win green and go green during the $70,000 home solar giveaway at Quachan Casino Resort. Power up and receive five entries when playing with your Player Rewards Club card for every 25 reward points earned. One lucky player could go off the grid and win a $25,000 home solar package April 9th and 23rd during the $70,000 home solar giveaway. So much, so close. Quachan Casino Resort. Need to refresh a room in your home? Yeah, have you seen this place? Well, right now, you can get a look you love and save big during the home makeover sale at Furniture Row. Find huge savings on every sofa, every dining table, and every bed. Plus, get four years no interest financing. And check out special purchases while they last. Shop the largest selection at the lowest prices, guaranteed. I love it. The home makeover sale, on now at Furniture Row. Scored? Yeah, we scored. We scored. We're going to the playoffs. <clears throat> Rivalry baseball in Yuma. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Scott Gross. Cibola and Kofa locked horns tonight under the lights in game two of the three game regular season series. To Dean Stout Ballpark on the campus of Kofa High School, the Kofa Kings looking to even the season series at one. Cibola senior Antonio Torres on the hill in the bottom of the first with two outs and runners on the corners. Kofa sophomore Zay Cordova ropes his pitch into left center, scoring Sebastian Viegas from third. Angel Fragoso races into third, and Cordova has himself an RBI double. Next. Torres is going to get freshman Walter Gay goes swinging to end the first inning. A one-one, a one-run lead for Kofa senior Roberto Mendoza. Into the second we go. Cibola's Andrew Yi leads out the second with this grounder to third. A nice play by Angel Fragoso. Fires to Aiden Rodriguez at first for the out. Five-three on the putout. Next for the Raiders at senior Aiden Guzman and he hits a slow roller to Fragoso at third. Guzman beats out the throw for an infield hit. Moments later, Guzman running. It's the pitcher's best friend. The 6-4-3 double play. Kofa and pitcher Roberto Mendoza out of the inning. The final score in this one, 7-1, Cibola. To the afternoon baseball at Yuma Catholic High School. The nice crowd, a festive crowd on hand to catch the Parker Bronx and Yuma Catholic Shamrocks. 
Rock starter and senior captain Austin Priest working into the fifth and a scoreless tie. Leadoff batter, watch, he's going to hit this breaking ball to short where junior Juan Lugo has a get away from him. He sticks with it, spins and throws to first for the out. Great play, great stretch. I like her, I like her a lot. Moments later, with a runner on second, Priest introduces Uncle Charlie and freezes the batter for the called strike three. It works so well. Hey, let's try it again. Another breaking ball in the outside part of the plate. A swing and a miss. Priest is just downright nasty. That's nasty. Bottom of the fifth. After a leadoff walk, Numar Tapiti steals second. Standing up, maybe should have slid. Now, with runners on the corners, a grounder to short brings on Tapiti from third. The 6-3 putout gives the Rocks a 1-0 lead. They go on to win 10-0 in six innings and have now won four games in a row. They'll be in Parker tomorrow. On the same campus, prep softball between Parker and Yuma Catholic. The Lady Shamrocks well in control in this one. Alyssa Soto in the circle enjoying a 13-1 lead in the fourth. First batter that Soto is going to face. She brings the heat, gets the foul tip. Nice job by the catcher to hang on for the out. Moments later, it's a ground ball to short where freshman Alondra Cordova fields and fires to Melanie Jones at first. Nice play. Now to the home half of the fourth. Isabel Ruiz shows a bunt but pulls back and smacks a base hit to left field. Later in the inning, with runners on the corners, Alondra Cordova will launch this rocket to deep right center. It's going to be mishandled and the Rocks will score twice. Yuma Catholic has no problems with Parker running away with a 16-1 victory. To Gila Ridge High School with the Centennial Coyotes in town looking to extend their four-game winning streak. A happy birthday to the Campo Twins, Alyssa and Ashley. The Hawks looking to give them a win on their special day. Clarissa Radar in the circle to start for Gila Ridge. Top of the first, Centennial senior Alexis Valencia with the running slap hit that finds the glove of freshman Isabella Burke at third for the first out. Next is Coyotes' Candace Walding with this grounder to short, which is fielded by Carmen Salinas to fire over to Amy Cisneros in first. Topless were uh, scoreless in the top of the first to the home half. Centennial Samantha Jarvis looking to return the favor. Carmen Salinas at the plate. Amy Cisneros, she steals second base. Then Samantha Jarvis would get Salinas to put it out to third for the first out. Next she gets the Hawks' Addison Duke to fly out to Sierra Walding in center. Both teams held scoreless, but Centennial's bats come alive. They win 11 0 in five innings. Not a nice gift for the Hawks. Campo Twins on their birthday. That's all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back. Here's a story about a fella I know. He's smart and strong. It's Bruce from Big O. It's Bruce. Big O's Bruce. Born and raised and proud of this town. If you need new tires, you know who's around. It's Bruce. Now buy three, get one free on select sets of tires with installation purchase. Plus, pay nothing today with easy and affordable financing options for nearly any budget. And take advantage of great deals on a conventional oil change. I get it. Your couch is comfortable. That's why United Nissan brings the dealership to you. Browse our new and pre-owned inventory instantly, right from your phone. Visit us online at unitednissanimperial.com. Quiet, show starting. It's something like 200 or 300 people, but there's quite a few people whose families don't know where they are. 90,000 Mexican citizens unaccounted for, leaving families wondering where and how their loved ones disappeared. We're made up of different families. We all have the same pain, the same desperation. The search for those missing in Mexico. So a hive can live for a year, but if we're not managing them for disease and treating them for disease, that hive isn't going to live for a year. Pollinators make sure all plants grow. From the beginning of month, one month to the end of the month, if, um, if you don't treat them or you're not watching out for it, that whole hive can be decimated and not survive. But are they really endangered? How you can help them thrive at home and what it takes to keep the bees. They just worked under me. I told them what to do and they did it. Cheated out of their pay by an old friend. I give them cash advances constantly. So for me to owe them kind of seems odd. But are his hurt feelings. You had to suffer a hostile work environment. Also worth a few bucks. Every once in a while there'd be a, a low blow statement. Yelling, spittle, flying, you know, stuff like that. Do what? I don't think so. 
Next, Judge GD. When they learn something new, and you can just see in their faces, it's such an incredible moment. It's those moments that are my favorite. And welcome back. Yeah, we are going to have uh, a big change in our temperatures. 97 tomorrow, 97 Thursday, 100 and Friday. Make sure that you stay in, stay cool. Get a lot of fluids in your system. Also, Imperial Valley going to be hot as well. 100 on Friday, 101 on Saturday. Thank you so much for watching us tonight. Stephen Colbert is next.